Hey guys, and welcome to this video on Big O. So in this video, we're going to show that 10n squared plus 5n plus 1 belongs to Big O of n squared. And in the green rectangle here, we have the definition of what it means for a function to belong to Big O of another function. And it states that f of n belongs to Big O of g of n, where f of n and g of n are both functions. If f of n is less than or equal to m, so m is some constant value, times g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to k, where k is also some constant. Now again, this is where m and k are both positive constants. And right here is the belongs to symbol. If you weren't for sure what that meant, that means belongs to. Okay? So... Let's first identify our function f of n and then identify our function g of n. So f of n is equal to 10 times n squared plus 5 times n plus 1. And I got that from right up here. All right. Now let's identify our function g of n. So g of n is equal to n squared. And I got that from right here. Okay? All right. So we just need to find values m and k, or for m and k, that will make that statement true. The statement that f of n is less than or equal to m times g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to k. So let's go ahead and write that. So we're going to write f of n is less than or equal to m times g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to k. All right. So how do we find these values m and k or the values for m and k? Well, we can guess those values or we can assume a value for k so we're just going to choose a value for k and then with that we're going to derive a value for m and that's what we're going to do here so I'm going to assume that k is equal to 1 and then m we don't know what is equal to yet Okay, so we don't know what value will make this statement true. Value or values, actually. So it could be many different values that can make this true. All right. So let's rewrite the equation now. But this time, we're going to substitute in for f of n, 10 times n squared plus 5 times n plus 1. And then we're going to substitute in for g of n, n squared. So we get 10 times n squared plus 5 times n plus 1 is less than or equal to m times n squared for all values of n greater than or equal to. Well, we have k before, but we're assuming that k equals 1 here. So for k, we're going to put in 1. All right. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the, well, let's see here. We're going to put M by itself. We want M to be by itself. That would be the easiest way to do this. And to do that, I just need to divide both sides of the equation by N squared. So if I do that, then I get 10 plus 5 divided by n plus 1 divided by n squared is less than or equal to m. And this is for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Okay? So this basically tells us what value m is. And you might not see it right away, but let's take a look here. A closer look at least. 
So this left hand side of the equation is 10 plus 5 divided by n plus 1 over n squared. Okay, so what's the maximum value this side can be? Well, let me write that down here. We're going to write 10 plus 5 divided by n plus 1 divided by n squared. Now remember, this is for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And we get that from here. Okay? So that means that the smallest value that n is going to be is 1. So let's plug in 1. So we're going to plug in n equals 1 into the equation. And believe it or not, this is actually going to be the maximum value that the left-hand side can be. And I will explain that as we go on. So we get 10 plus 5 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by 1 squared. And this is equal to uh, 10 plus 5 plus 1, which is equal to 16. And now let's plug in another value for n. So we will plug in, um, let's do n equals 10. Well, let's do a smaller value first. Let's do n equals 2. So now we get 10 plus 5 divided by 2 plus 1 over 2 squared. And this gives us 10 plus 2.8. 5 plus uh, 1 divided by 2 to the power of 2 is 0.25 or 1 fourth and this is equal to 12.75 um, which is smaller than that value 16 and now I'm going to plug in n equals 10 and we get 10 plus 5 divided by 10 plus 1 over 10 squared, and this is equal to 10 plus 0.5, because that's a half, plus 1 divided by 100 is 0 0.01, and this is equal to 10.51. And we can see that that's even smaller than 12.75. So what we're seeing here is that as the value n increases, the overall statement on the left-hand side, which is this here, decreases. Okay? And so again, the maximum value that that left-hand side of the equation can be is 16. Okay? All right, so I'm going to erase this here. And what this means is that we can just replace that whole side with the value 16. So let's rewrite the equation. Since we know the maximum value that the left-hand side is going to be, and we put less than or equal to m for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And this tells us that we can choose a value for m that is greater than or equal to 16. All right. So let's erase this equation. And now we know that m can be a value that's greater than or equal to 16. So actually, I'm going to erase that equal sign as well. And I'm going to put m is greater than or equal to 16. So it's going to be some value that's, again, greater than or equal to 16. All right, let me just rewrite that 16 here. There we go. So I'm going to choose for, let me see, I'm going to choose m equal to 20. All right, and now if I rewrite the equation, we get 10 times n squared plus 5 times n plus 1 is less than or equal to 20 times n squared for all values of 
and greater than or equal to 1. All right. Now, this whole statement needs to be true in order for our function f of n to belong to big O of g of n. So let's divide both sides by n squared like we did before. And we get 10 plus 5 divided by n plus 1 over n squared. And this is less than or equal to 20 for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And we know this is true because the maximum value that that left-hand side here can be is 16. So if we rewrite this again, we get 16 is less than or equal to 20, which is always true no matter what the value n is. But we still will put for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. So this is always true. Okay? So I'm going to put these three dots here, which means therefore the function f of n belongs to, and again, that's the symbol for belongs to, big O of g of n. This is what we've just now proven. And this implies that 10 times n squared plus 5n plus 1 belongs to big O of n squared. And that is our answer. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button. And if you found this video helpful, please share it. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.